Welcome to Real Estate Uncensored, the place for actionable ideas to reach people online, build your personal brand, and get more clients. That is Greg McDaniel, the Junior Grand Master of Sales in the co-pilot seat. And that is Matt Johnson, agency owner, author of Microfamous, and certified Greg Wrangler. Each week, you're going to hear from some of the best coaches, leaders, brokers, top producing agents, and social media experts, all with one goal, give you the sales and marketing tactics to up your game today. Okay. Now let's jump back into the latest episode of Real Estate Uncensored. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you learn how to reach people online, build influence, build a brand, take on more clients. We're talking about all that and more today. We've got Ashley Chapman on the show today, and Greg apparently has decided for some reason to crowd the camera, which you can't really tell if you're listening. But if you're here live with us on Facebook, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we're gonna, we got a lot of stuff to get into. So Ashley is a 25-year-old real estate agent and now turning into investor. We're going to talk about how she took 30 listings in a week, how she's crushing it, how she's doing it with uh, prospecting and lead generation as opposed to social media. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing all about that. But before we do that, we've got Gene. We've got the evil bald ninja is here. We'll bring him in in a second. But first, the junior grandmaster firmly ensconced in the co-pilot seat where you so belong, very, very far away from me, the man bear himself, Greg McDaniel. <laughs> What up, guys? Glad to be here. I'm in an echoey uh, location today. I'm trying to do my best for audio. So I, you know, per Matt's request, I will shush myself as much as possible, even though I think I have an amazing opportunity to go out there and influence people on a positive level. Fuck you, Matt. Um, but still love you to pieces. We have Ashley here who's going to drop knowledge bombs. She's a good friend of mine, a confidant, and uh, someone that you guys are going to be able to learn a lot from. Uh, but first, we have to go to the baldest of the bald, Mr. Gene. Wow. That, I'm glad I had my earphones in for that. Holy yeah, I was going to say that was that was strong, but a bit excessive, especially for you. And which you tend to uh, you tend to take a, a bit of a back seat sometimes, Gene, like you go whole stretches of time without talking. So it's a bit of a strong. He may be overselling you is what I'm saying. Uh, he was overselling me, but I'm going to come with the heat today. Can I tell you a little about? Are you bringing something? the heat? All right. I'm going to bring a little something. We're talking a little. A little bit investing. We're kind of in your wheelhouse a bit. Well, but before we get into the, that's actually true. Before we get into that element of it, can I just give, uh, can I just say something real quick? Rough Riders Nation. I don't know if you heard this or not, but DMX passed away today. I know. Yeah. So, Talking about the rapper DMX? Yeah. Okay. As, as, as opposed to the car salesman DMX? Uh, well, I was going to say, I'm so, uh, that's not exactly my chosen genre, although I do have a hip hop album under my belt, believe it or not. But yeah, it's like it took me a split second wait, to know if you were talking about DMX because I was on, wildly wait. confused. Hold on. Matt, you Go ahead, Greg, please do. Hip hop album? Yeah. I yeah. do. Yeah, I we're, we're going to need to. We have never talked about that. this before? No. no. Yeah. Yeah. I have, yes, yeah, so I did all the production and music <laughs> and half the vocals. But I did not rap. Incredible, dude. How do I get it? <laughs> I don't even think you can get it. It doesn't exist on the interwebs. Thank oh, God. my God. Okay. We got to stop. step away from white boy rappers and step into amazing real estate agents. <laughs> Ashley. What's up, team? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, first of all, you knew what you were getting into. You know, Greg. So I, I can't. I can't. I was going to say I feel sorry for you, but you know exactly what you're in for. So first of all. Uh, give us the uh, just the 60 second bio. Who are you? Where are you? And what do you do? Yeah, Ashley Chapman, San Diego, California, real estate agent and investor um, came from Washington State, used to sell cars. That was a, a jazzy time in the life of Ashley Chapman. Um, yeah, I'm sitting in my office right now, big block realty and just chilling. Um, yeah, I am. I'm 25 years old. I talk to Greg all the time and we, uh, you know, do some cold calls on occasion. So that's the 60 second bio. So, uh, so what got you into real estate? You went from, you know, transitioned from selling cars, which sounded uh, glorious and resplendent. Uh, what got you into real estate? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I mean, I wanted to get into real estate when I lived in Seattle when I was selling cars. Uh, and then I just kind of thought one day I was like sitting at work, uh, Honda of Seattle, good times. I was just like, you know what? I'm out of here. Uh, you cap out in car sales, you only make so much money, right? Like you can only really break like 10, 20 grand a month. So 
I just decided like, hey, I found a place to live in San Diego. I'm peacing out, quit my job the next day, um, took the summer off, moved to San Diego in 2017, and then um, started working as an ISA, inside sales agent, and making cold calls for six to eight hours a day to foreclosures. It just was a rolling, it was a snowball effect after that. It just, you know, distressed properties, all of that, and got licensed in 2018. And here we are doing deals. Nice. So, uh, uh, so tell me a little bit about the, uh, the, the experience as an ISA. How long did that last? And uh, did you love it? Hate it? What was your experience being an ISA for somebody else? Um, I mean, it, it was really good. I have to say that I did not love it at first. I was basically given a mojo dialer, triple line dialer, and a bunch of notice of defaults, uh, foreclosure lists, and was told to start calling. So that's basically what I did. So I kind of built off of that and started learning as I went. Then I grew into loving it. I started to love it so much when I started to set appointments. I figured out really quickly appointments equaled contracts, right, for the broker at the times. You know, that's how I got paid was contracts. So, um, you know, you learn really quickly, like, I have to get a deal. Otherwise, I'm screwed. It just, I mean, when I started to learn more about foreclosures, bankruptcy, all that stuff, then I loved it because I had the foundation to call and know what I was talking about. But when I first started, it was, it was pretty freaking rough. I went through a couple of scripts and then I just found the one that worked for me and I ran with it. Interesting. What, what did you do to kind of learn and get your feet underneath you? So you knew how to have the conversations with the homeowners. Yeah. I started calling attorneys, bankruptcy attorneys. Um, I started learning what loan mods were. Um, I started doing a bunch of research. Um, I found an attorney in San Diego. There is one that I know of that even does loan modifications still. So I started picking her brain um, and chatting with her. Uh, she's a huge resource. Uh, and then I started doing loan modifications for people. And through that process, when I got licensed, it was like, boom, short sale after short sale, right? So just a lot of like putting myself out there uh, and just talking because otherwise you, you just, how do you know? You don't. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So we've got a bunch of stuff we can get into there. I'm sure Greg will want to do some role play through the scripting stuff, but let's talk about this 30 listings in one week. So I want to hear about that and tell me a little yeah. bit about the, uh, the background story. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, um, I took 30 listings in one week. Um, one of the investors in town that I work with, basically they had, they're flipping this 30 condos. And I actually called him up one day and I was like, dude, we're, we're the same person. Why am I not your listing agent? You know, I didn't even know who his <laughs> listing agent was. I literally did not know who his listing agent was. I knew that we had the same title rep and that he was flipping houses. And I was like, I was like, what the heck are you doing? Um, so I just called him up out of the blue and I was like, dude, why am I not your agent? I don't know what the heck is going on, but I need to be the one. And he was like, oh, it's so crazy. You're calling me right now. Like I, I've been thinking about, you know, some things. I have some deals coming up and I was like, cool, put me on them. So anyway, we kind of had a couple meetings and there was a few conversations that were just like, yeah, why don't you give, uh, I mean, I was competing with people. They were like, why don't you give one to her and one to somebody else? And I basically said, no, uh, <laughs> I either get all of them or I walk out of this office right now. Um, and that actually nailed me the deal. They were like, we freaking love it. So I <laughs> walked out of there with 30 listings and, uh, first one just hit the market. So it's been a, a real fun ride. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. First of all, congratulations. That's fantastic. Uh, I, yeah, I love it because that, you know, it's the same thing. Greg, you're this way when you, when you, when you run into that right prospect, when you, when you're like, man, I just, they should just be a client for the love of God, quit pussyfitting, pussyfitting around. Let's just get it done. Uh, I like those when I run across those types of clients, when you can, when you feel that way. And then when you say that and you're like, you know what? You're right. Why am I dicking around? Let's just get this done and let's move on. Let's get it rolling. Uh, those are my favorite types of clients to work with. And uh, when you find some of those to just to break it down and be authentic, uh, I think it gets the right people's attention. And I think you can be a lot more. I don't know, Ashley, if you found this way, but I would suspect you can probably be that way a lot more with investors than you can with the run of the mill homeowners who are doing a deal every seven years. Uh, yeah, I actually am that way with my regular clients as well. Um, if I'm sitting in a listing appointment and someone tells me they're interviewing, I'm like, look, 
I don't compete for business. I am valued. I get to decide if I'm working with you uh, just as much as you get to decide if you're working with me. That has gotten me more business than anything else. And so I have just stuck with that. But also that's really who I am. I'm a very black and white, straight up human being. So, um, you know, I, I just, that's, that's how I run the show. I just, you know, this is my business. I get to dictate what I take and what I don't. Yeah. All right. So before we move into the conversation about going from agent to investor, Greg, you've been disturbingly quiet, which usually means you're gearing up for something terrible or awful, or you're going to insult me in some way. So feel free. Just go ahead and interject. Say what you you're going to say. Eating lunch. You could be eating lunch. <laughs> He's eating lunch. <laughs> I, act I actually am not eating lunch. Thank you very much. I'm sitting here quietly trying to find disturbing photos so I can, you know, just chastise you on the show. Oh, but okay. All right. So you're, you're planning revenge in some other way, but okay. Yes. All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> Fine. We'll move Can on. I say then. something. So, yes. Go ahead. Gene. Wait, no, not, not yet. Not yet. I was planning. I was actually doing the same thing. I was quiet because I was looking for a rap album. <laughs> <laughs> I was feverishly searching oh, for some God. kind of snippet. MP4 you will, you will never find it. Gene. Oh man. I, damn it. That's a challenge. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Let's talk about the transition. So Ashley, what got your attention about the investing world and what, what made you decide to kind of start transitioning away to set yourself up to be almost like, it sounds like you're going investor only eventually. And you're kind of in the middle of that transition. I literally, I have been prospecting for so long. I actually, you know, would go on five to seven, 10 appointments a week. Um, and I walked into a deal in early 2019, literally like the seller just wanted they, they wanted like half of what the house is worth. I mean, it was a complete, mess. I was like, holy crap, I have something here. I just didn't realize that prior to this. Walked in, I was like, dang, they want this. They want a cash offer for, for what they're telling me. This house is worth double. I don't know what I am doing. I'm doing the wrong thing. Like I kind of put my feelers out there and I was like, I'm going to wholesale this deal. I'm going to wholesale it. I don't care what it takes. I'm going to figure it out. So I did a joint venture with someone, wholesaled that deal, made five figures on it. Um, you know, super high five figures. And just I walked away like, and then everything after that was like every single distressed property I walked into, I was like, okay, hey, wholesale first, as is listing second, mm -hmm. um, you know, potentially just refer it out to somebody third, right? Because I was like, oh, I shouldn't be taking listings at all. I should be buying these properties, but I also needed to build up some capital. So I built up capital doing wholesale deals. And that's literally how it started. I just, I kind of stumbled upon it. I was like, what am yeah. I doing? I cannot not buy this deal. Love it. So let's talk about uh, some of the skills that you've had to build. So you're, you're going in and, and now the conversations have like the conversations that you want to have with the homeowners have effectively shifted. You're not going for the listing anymore. Um, has, has that affected your initial scripting at all are you going in now purely as an investor first agent second are you telling them in your investor on the phone first are you going in agent first what's the how's that affected your process oh yeah no i i literally i i've gotten the verbiage down so well i ask people if they'd entertain an offer because offer means they'd entertain if if there's any sort of indication that there's a yes to that right that means they'd entertain offers from buyers they'd entertain my offer <laughs> or <laughs> um i mean it, it's for, really for any of you funny. listening greg has started he has commenced the graphics on the top oh okay keep God. calm i'm a baller uh ashley is a baller um but yes for those of you listening you're about to be wildly confused because greg is going to start just throwing up random graphics on top of the show uh <laughs> okay so anyway so you've got the scripting down would you, so basically it's, would you entertain an offer? Cause an offer can mean a buyer, an offer can mean investor it can mean a lot of things, right? Right. Okay. Uh, and, and then it's just like any sort of indication that's a yes. The second I walk into that house and I can get in front of a homeowner, it's like, okay, well I have reinforcement with that conversation, right? Like, well, you, you know, it, this is what you said and this is why I'm here. So I always go for the wholesale first, If okay. it's not a wholesale and they like, you know, for whatever reason, then I try to go to flip. Um, the more experience I've gotten, I have it kind of down. Then I'm like, okay, listing. I typically don't want to take the listing. I'll take some here and there. Um, but I'll refer that out to my team. And then, you know, just 
whatever we do renovation to sell simpler, uh, similar to like Compass Concierge. You know, we put money up to renovate the house and then put it on the market to get top dollar. But in distress mm-hmm. situations, it's usually a wholesale or flip. Okay. And are you doing like in the, in the Compass Concierge, are they, is it like a joint venture agreement? They're putting up the money and then they're making a bigger piece of the, uh, than, a, than a standard commission on the back end? Yeah, I think they do. I I always go like if if we're doing a renovate to some like seven percent or nothing. Um, yeah. Like that. That's just like what it is. But you know, I mean, you could do it either way. It it is what it, I, I'm just like. You know what? If it if they want to renovate to sell it, cool. Somebody on my team can take that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So my question for Greg is, uh, like you and I have been around the business for a while. I mean, you know how to do all this stuff. Your dad has access to money lending. We've talked about owner terms and all this stuff uh are you are you starting to shift your verbiage or are you still going in primarily as the agent first and investors maybe a distant second like how how are you running it now i'm assuming you're talking to me right yes i did say greg okay good i'm sorry i'm, I'm sorry directing everything behind the scenes running this entire organization. <laughs> right, no, it's very it's very hard to run the show and look for annoying gifts all at the same time it's 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 challenging to multitask you mean like you mean like you mean like this one like yeah. that one, okay. No, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it it is a different shift. I mean, a lot of us, we, we my dad and I have talked about this a lot of times, um, and that we we always joke that we should have bought every single listing we ever had. Um, uh, yes. But when it comes into uh, the future of stuff, you do need to be proactive in regards to kind of how you're going to run your business because a lot of people, there's a lot of opportunity out there and folks are just looking for a solution. Now, could you make your you know, air codes 20,000 or whatever it's going to be for your commission? Or could you make a hundred thousand, 200,000 on a wholesale or a flip? Um, look at business a little bit more strategic versus just pragmatic. And it's like, Oh, this is just the way it's always done. No, no. Let, let's look at it creatively. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we love it when Gene shaves his head and because it, it's very creative. And I mean, he's got a great you know, face of beard and everything else. But I mean, all jokes aside, realistically, be much more, you know, be forward thinking in the way you guys do your business. Uh, that's what we're doing right now. And that's what Ashley is crushing it on. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is like when I when I look at all the like the most successful teams. You know, you're talking about the Jeff Cones of the world, the Greg Harrelsons, uh, even like Tom Caffarella, who runs the Agent Investor Podcast that, that I mentioned to you behind the scenes. Like all of these guys run some variation of the same thing, right? Where they've got a real estate team, a residential real estate team, running in parallel with an investment business. And in Jeff Cohn's case, a lot of the ad spend, the postcards that are going out, are now shifting to where he's putting a lot of spend into generating investor leads first because it's actually easier to get that way by going in as an investor. Then they evaluate the deal. Then they go, okay, well, this is really not right. Like you need more than what an investor can offer you. Would you prefer to just put your home on the market? And by the way, we have that service. I see more and more people talking about it. This is one of those, I I just, I wonder if this is the team model that's going to get, you know, essentially be the future of the business for the next 20, 10 or 20 years or something like that. Uh, Cause the smartest people that I know that I get to hang around, this is what they're all doing. So I don't know if that, uh, so I think Ashley, you're on the right track. Um, Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that have been around the block a lot, been through multiple recessions and yeah. they're doing some version of this. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's a serious uh, transition. I think um, agents have to get out of that commission mindset. There are so many different options. And if, you know, I always see the objection or hear the objection from agents specifically, like, oh, I don't have the funds. I can't flip right. a house. Right. Dude, there are so many people out here, joint venture. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I, I literally just put yourself out there, get in touch with people. There's somebody out there who will split something with you, you know, get your feet wet, bring a deal to somebody else. See what kind of, see what kind of, of split that you can do. do. Like what, what do you have to lose? Nothing. Yeah. I think, uh, I think when it comes to agents, what I've noticed is there's, there's a, there's a couple of things. So number one is the scarcity mentality around the joint venture stuff. It's like, which is if I can't get hundred percent of the deal, what's the point? It's like, well, the point is you get, 50% of the deal, which is better than nothing, number one. Right. Number two, you, you start to build up, like you talked about, Ashley, you kind of build up that reserve of capital so that, you know, five deals in, 10 deals in, whatever it takes, you can start getting 100% of the deal. But 
you're never going to get there if you don't do anything now. And I think a lot of agents have that problem, you know, just the 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 risk, the discomfort, the whatever of going in and pitching somebody else and bringing a deal to somebody else and being willing to not get 100% of it to get started. Um, I would challenge them to go read Jay Abraham's book, How to Get Everything You Can Out of All You've Got. That should disabuse you of any reluctance to do JVs and stuff because it's one of the best ways to get started. And it's one of the, the ways that some of the richest people in the world have made their money. Uh, so I don't, I don't know quite why there's this, uh, you know, lots of agents have a scarcity mentality in, in all areas. And this is just one of the, the places where it manifests. And then I think the other thing that people have an issue with is getting their core real estate business, their lead gen up and running enough to where they can start to like get out of the commission roller coaster, you know, having commission breath and just get over that, that part of it. And I think actually that's part of where you just hammering away at the phones and getting good at lead generation. I think that's part of what gave you the space to walk in there and go, you know, the business is fine. I'll be able to generate leads. Maybe I can do this wholesale deal and I'm not worrying about putting off the commission check that I thought I was going to get from this one house. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I think there's just so many different avenues in real estate and so many excuses that people come up with as to why they can't do it um, instead of getting started. And yeah. lead generation will always be the same. The foundation and the fundamentals of real estate will always be the same. Door knocking, cold calling, open houses, right? Mm -hmm. And if you are consistent and you do that enough, um, you are bound to get deals and build a massive pipeline. You just have to keep doing it. And I think a lot of people don't want to stay in the trenches for long enough. Um, and, you know, I mean, I'm still in the trenches. I'll cold call. You know, I, I kind of have some ISAs running now, but um, it's a it's a mentality. It's a discipline. It's not a um, you don't just walk into it. Yeah. Well, speaking of lead generation, let's talk about your growing and exploding uh, TikTok account. Oh wait. <laughs> no, you're not you're not all over TikTok. You're not you're not all about the gram. So no, Ashley, how are you generating leads? <laughs> my TikTok, my TikTok handle is Ashless Chaps. Just have to throw that out there just in case. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I don't do a ton of social media. I never okay. did. I think it's like the shiny object syndrome. I just want to um I just wanted to hit the phones. I was like, I have to stay on the phones. You know, there were some days where I'd make a thousand calls and not talk to anyone, you know, and then there were some days I'd make 200 calls and talk to a hundred people. Um, so, I mean, I'm trying on social media now to be like more involved, but it's really just like my authentic real life, like what I'm doing during the day or whatever. Um, I, I don't really care. I just don't care about getting business on social media. I think people, um, they, put on social media what pe they want people to see them quote unquote doing, but they're not actually doing and you know, <laughs> go out there and go, go out there and do it instead. That's um, right. and well, Gene's got his videos of shaving, it. you know, and, and we know that that happens because we can see the end result. <laughs> and it's glorious. It is glorious. That's right. I am. I am blinded by the light. Wait, let, um, me, let me step in here for a second. Yeah. Cause I'm calling bullshit on Ashley. Thank oh, you. Shit. Thank you. Flat out. No, but I want to say, and actually, Greg, put me back in so I can watch your reaction to this. I'd rather see her, okay. her reaction to this. No, look, <laughs> I follow you. I've known you now for, for a couple months, and I will say that yes. you do enough on social media, and it's all real stuff. I mean, it's, it seems like it's, there's a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. There's It's not, hey, look at me. This is what I do. It's more like you you do enough behind the scenes real world shit so there's an element of not maybe not really flat out coming out and saying i i need you to give me private money i turn private money into profits we'll go in jv but, but you're like behind the scenes at the flip boom 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 here's these three things and you're always with your partner it's really easy for me to tell and i think this even whether or not it's strategically done or you just do it by accident it's well done because i know what you're doing and i actually know who you are and i I can't help but think that there are people that are researching you that will watch that and like your style based off of it and then call you. You know, like it's one of those things. I don't think maybe in certain cases, most people aren't saying, hey, I've been an avid fan of your social for the last four months. I want to do business with you. It's more like 
I think I might want to do business with her. Let me check out her social. Oh, she's as real as it gets. Yeah, let's do business. Like, I think there's an element of that, right? Yeah, yeah, there is. Um, I just don't get clients from social media, right? Like, I haven't seen a return on that. My social media is just super geared towards like, okay, here, this is what I'm doing. But also, here's what I do on my off time. You know, like the people that know me who are on my social media, like, they just know that it's super raw, unedited. Like, I'm going to say whatever the F I want. And so, Except you, know, that you didn't write I, there, though. Except you didn't write there. You whatever did the fuck yourself. I want. There you go. <laughs> there you but, go. yeah, I, I say whatever the fuck I want. It's just, it. it's 100% me. And, you know, I just, I haven't seen a huge return on that yet. I think a lot of people more so, um, you know, I, I get business from cold calls. So when I first started in the business, when I say shiny object syndrome, I specifically mean like, hey, I didn't have a website. I didn't have business cards, really. I didn't have anything. Okay. I had a phone and a dialer and leads. What is going to get you business now? Is social media going to get you business now? Are you reaching out to people on social media? Then you need do something consistently. Like if you're talking to your followers on, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, like build relationships with them. It is super powerful. But at the time when I started, I just was like, nope, cut the bullshit. I don't want any of that because it's not going to get me business now. I don't know anybody in San Diego. I moved here sight unseen. I had no clue what San Diego had in store for me. I just knew I wanted to get started in real estate. I didn't even know what a, like bankruptcy was, okay, for these leads I was calling. It was just a completely different thing. So now in my business, yeah, you'll see me doing what I want, but it's just not how I get business ever. I, I think if you asked a lot of the top agents around the country, they'd confirm that same thing. Now, that's not everybody. Mm -hmm. I know plenty of agents that do get business off of Facebook, Instagram. I mean, Greg, you and I interviewed one of the gals that was in your brokerage a couple of years ago that very similar to Ashley uh, Young, came into the business really young and absolutely crushed it messaging her her database on Facebook. Now, granted, she had a database because she was from the area, but um, who, who was that, by the way? Do you remember? That was one of the very first ones that we – that was in the first six months that we did the show. Yeah. There's no question that works. And, there, and, there, and I've, I've interviewed people that built an Instagram following that did legitimately get their get business for them. Now, it's not a lot. I, I got to tell you, it's not a lot. Um, and, and none of the I would say none of the successful team leaders I know get shiny object syndrome. If they do social media, it's like you, Ashley, they just they're super focused. They know exactly what gets them business and they might tinker over here to see, OK, well, can I build a presence in one place? that will get me business. Let's give it a while and let's see how it goes. But I'm going to keep doing the bread and butter stuff that I know gets results. Um, and to me, that if, if you're going to experiment with social media as an agent, that, that's the better approach. Do the stuff that's like, you know, Greg, you've always talked about the blending, the old school, and the new school, the high tech, the high touch. You know, we preach that, you preach that on this show for freaking years. Um, so to me, that's always the best combination. You go old school as your foundation, whatever you're comfortable with, and then you can experiment with something on top of that that is unproven and won't necessarily get you business right now, but it might get you business right. six months from now. And it will nurture the people that are in your database to get referrals. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But I just love the fact that you're one of those that you came out right of the gate and you're like, there's a short, straight, direct path to the money. Let's go get it. And then we'll figure out the other stuff later. Literally. Figure out yeah. the other stuff later. I, I, yeah. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the the scripting and what's in the toolkit when you're talking to leads now. So right now, you've got different things in your in your pocket. You've got you know your three, your kind of hierarchy, what you, where you want to do wholesale first, listing last. So let's talk a little bit about what the conversations look like. Um, and then I want to ask you if there's any crazy you know, situations, deals that you've helped people get out of. We'll get to that in a second. But what what are your conversations going like right now? And uh, and Greg, I'm curious just on your, you know, press her a little bit on the on the scripting of things. But Ashley, give us a sense of just what your average conversation is like with the people that you're calling right now. Hey, this is Ashley. Do you remember me? <laughs> Every wait, time. Now, wait, now is this a pure cold, like the first time cold call? <laughs> Or is it a complete yeah. BS? Okay, got it. First cold call right. is like, hey, dude, here's the you thing. Remember. I've, so I've heard of people many, doing that. It's so freaking genius. Yeah, I love it. He, so many people are calling foreclosures, right? Mm -hmm. So in the very beginning, I had a script. I was like, hey, I'm calling about the trustee sale date that you have on the property. Shut up. Wait for them to respond. 
they would just hang up every time. It was just like a, it was just like a road to nowhere. So <laughs> I just was like, oh my gosh, you know how many people are calling these people? Like hundreds. So I'm just like, okay, hey, this is Ashley. Do you remember me? They're like, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, yeah, I know. I am so sorry. Just want to touch base with you on 123 Main Street. Have you gotten the sale date on that property postponed? What is it? Like, so glad, so glad that we're, we're chatting again. And then it, it kind of, um, Greg likes to call it like an icebreaker, which it's true. But then you get into like the real conversation of, of everything. They, they, they'll tell me anything. You know, like you can't really use that script for like, I mean, I guess you could potentially use it on expireds, but for NODs, like I just realized like so many people are calling these people. What is different that I'm going to say to get their attention? Because if they hang up in the first five seconds, you lose them forever, you know? So um, that's where I, that's where I got really good at that. But I also talk to people like they're, they're normal human beings. Um, What? yeah, I, I, it's like, dude, Greg, what's up? You still, you like, you're still the owner of One Two Three Mainstream. I'm frick. I'm so stoked we're chatting. Like, what's up? <laughs> what are you doing with that property? Um, because I'm <laughs> well, so, you have to like so make, stoked that we're chatting. I'm so oh stoked. my god! Okay. You gotta get like, you gotta get real with these people. They don't care about yeah. you. You know, yeah. they care about them. Like, what are you? What are you gonna chat about with them? Yeah, it's it's funny because I. I don't know if they told you this when you're going through ISA training, but I, when we train people like how to reach out to entrepreneurs and get them booked on podcasts or pitch people, whatever the case is, just, just like teaching new people how to communicate with entrepreneurs that we run with in the business. That's always one of the first things I have to tell people is their, their natural reaction when they reach out to somebody is to be too formal. I'm like, you have to go all, you almost have to go all the way to the other end of the dial and talk to them like you're already friends. And that sets the tone for the conversation. Uh, I've noticed it when people write emails, like I'm constantly having to go stop being too formal. Like don't, if you don't say hi in real life, say, Hey, in your email, just, just little things like that. Uh, I think people way overestimate how, and I, I think there's a trap for people that are young is to try to sound older, to try to sound too formal. And I think that just in this day and age, uh, people just don't need it. No. No, they don't. It's, you know, we're all human beings. Before before I came here, I was in like a cold calling training with uh, some of the ISAs that we're running right now. And I was like, you know what? People are hanging up on you because you're not being a real person. You know, they they, like you're just as normal as them. Like she, you know, the ISA, she was telling me like, oh, well, this guy was talking about 1031 exchange and, and all this stuff. I'm like, you know what you say? Like, I have the perfect person to hook you up with. Once I connect you with this guy on 1031 exchanges for your situation, it's going to work out. Let me, let me make a phone call and get you connected. How does that sound? Right. Cause that's so like, oh yeah. Like she knows what she's doing. Like we're going to get hooked up. This is going to be great. Um, but if you're just like, oh yeah, let me get back to you. Nobody cares <laughs> about that. It doesn't yeah. seem personal. It seems like, oh, well I'm just another number or whatever. Right. It's like this unconscious, I call mm-hmm. it like, you subconsciously like think they don't care, even if it's mm-hmm. if even if it's not in the front of your mind. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. All right, Greg, you want to pipe in? Any questions you have about scripting, phrasing, talking to homeowners, anything like that? Because you made a lot of the same types of calls, you know, Rebo Gateway leads and stuff like that. I never strayed into some of the other more exotic types of leads. When you say exotic, that sounds really weird. It does sound like a building slightly outside of an airport. Yes, that's yes. not what I meant. We have exotic leads over on this side, gentlemen. <laughs> but no, yeah. When it comes to having these conversations, like what Ashley was talking about, get get as real as human uh, humanly possible as fast as you can. Uh, get down and dirty with them. You know, speak the same vernacular that they that they speak because they're used to having people try to sell them on stuff. But it's really weird when someone tries to make a friend with you. And so a lot mm-hmm. of the times, I'm like, "Yo, what up, home cheese? What you doing?" And people are like, "Stop." fuck is going on with that script you just call me home cheese but uh, but i mean i did and the fact of the matter is that it's like ashley said it's an, it's an icebreaker because they do not expect that coming out of someone's voice out of their mouth when it comes to a sales call yo yo what up homie yo are you the are you the owner of blah 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 yakety schmack yeah rock and roll cool glad i got the right person let me ask you a question. I got a short amount of time here. I don't want to take a lot of time. I know you're busy. 
Um, are you thinking about selling that thing at buying chance or thinking about buying anything else? <laughs> selling that thing. <laughs> Dude, it worked. <laughs> it sounds funny though. It's funny the way you laid it out. Yeah, that's right. That's uh, you know, that that's uh, that sardine can you're living in. You thinking about getting rid of that, ditching that anytime soon? <laughs> Dude, they don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So they literally sit there and they're like, selling what? Uh, the property at 123 Main Street. I mean, I know you guys had it on the market you know, prior to. You're still looking at selling that bad boy? <laughs> literally, I love it's that. A, selling that bad boy. Oh, my gosh. Here's, here's the thing about this. Ashley does this incredibly well. Man, beer, beers and calls has changed a lot since the last time I tuned in. What is going on over there? It turned right. into scotch and calls or something. I don't think you've ever tuned in, Matt. I have. Oh. How dare you? I have dropped in occasionally oh, to listen to you listen to you make calls. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> scoffing at me behind the scenes. Guy doesn't know what he's doing. Anyways, oh the, point, the point is, is doing pattern interrupters and being able to be real with the people and have a conversation with them, not be scripted, but yet be scripted the exact same time, know exact where you want to go with everything. But yeah, being, knowing the roadmap and being being well, flexible about how you get there. Right. Use the vernacular mm-hmm. that knocks people off their off their heels. Because if I say, "Yo, Ash, it's uh, is it Ash or Ashley?" Oh, hey, this is Greg McDaniel with ABC Real Estate. Hey, I'm calling today because I wanted to see if you were thinking about selling that bad boy on uh, 123 Main Street. Is that still you know, still available or did you, or did you guys sell that thing? Well, <laughs> first of all, it's it's Ashless Chaps. Sorry. Just oh, want to Ashless say that. Yeah. <laughs> just to, yeah. Yeah, just to correct you. <laughs> Screw it up on that one. Ashless <laughs> Chaps. Um, are you, have, have you been thinking about selling anything uh, in the last couple of days? No. No. Okay. Uh, did something change? Because I, I saw that you had something on the market, you know, at one to three main street, um, uh, the other day, it, it, did that sell or not? No, no, we didn't sell it. You didn't sell it. Can, you didn't wait, hold up. You didn't sell it. Can I ask why you didn't sell it? I mean, what happened? I mean, cause that, that was my, a nice house. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I know the agent just was terrible. Like we had a bunch of offers and apparently we just couldn't take one. I don't know what the deal was. We canceled. Okay, not a problem. Are you guys still interested in selling, or are you guys put put that on the back burner? Yeah, I mean it's it's on the back burner for now, but uh, p- potentially potentially in the next couple months. I think we just need a break right now. Yeah, I agree. You. If I could drop a bag of cash in your in your pop in your pocket right now, uh, you pick the number. Uh, I drive over to your house and I say, "Here you go, Ash." Ass- well, assless champs. Sorry, my deepest apologies. Um, what would be what would that number be? Yeah, I mean, we we really want to net like, I, I think two hundred thousand is the number. That's what we really want to net on this thing. Yeah, copy that. I hear you on that one loud and clear. I have two different investors. One, uh, his name is Matt. The other one, his name is Gene. Uh, they're both cash investors. They're looking to buy here in the area. Um, would it be okay if you and I can meet for five minutes? And it'd literally be five minutes. And I'll wear gloves and a mask and everything else. And I'll be in and out uh, and take a look at your property. I take my shoes off the whole nine yards. I just want to be able to represent it to them because they're looking for pro- product to buy. Would a, would, if I could bring you that price, would you be open to at least having a conversation? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it wouldn't hurt us any. But like I said, we, we'll still need a couple of months. Um, but you can feel free to stop by as long as as long as they can adhere to that timeline. I, I think we'll be fine. Sure. Gene's very flexible. Matt's pretty rigid. So I'm not sure if he's going to be able to be the best buyer for you. Uh, but Gene, I think, could be a good buyer for you. You know, he's he, he's got a big heart of gold, Matt, tiny car, heart of of coal uh, when it comes to his investing strategies. So I think Gene would be a good 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 buyer for you. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, I, that, that's fine with me, bald and all. <laughs> wow! Whoa! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> hey, wait a second. I feel that's like discrimination. that's a violation of your realtor code. <laughs> <laughs> bald and all bald and all that's right oh and just for the record good, i would be a much better investor buyer than that just so we're clear oh really gene why is that let's me and you do a play-by-play ready oh <laughs> <laughs> wait who is it who, what, what are we role-playing here i don't know i just yeah i don't think so no uh-huh all right What's the crazy situation you've helped somebody get out of? Like short sale, anything come to mind just from your uh, from your wealth of experience? Man, I, I, I'm doing a deal right now that I actually was going to buy. Um, but the seller, you know, they they have a bunch of code violations on the property. It, it turned into a short sale. Let's just say that. But 
the mm-hmm. on the preliminary title report, I, I, there was zero indication. I mean, zero indication. There's some of those loan mod programs back in 2015 that, you know, they, they were just a mess. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm actually we're, we're going through short sale negotiations right now. It's been uh, a huge win. But the seller is, for lack of a better term, out of all the short sales I have done, this one is the best so far where the seller is appreciative and they just want a little bit of cash and they want to move. Um, so it's like, but, but they're, they're so open. They want help. You know, they're not denying it. They've accepted it. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so, so it turns into, it turns into a short sale after it was not supposed to be. Fun. Yeah, exactly. That sounds like a blast. No. no, I'm trying to not do short sales anymore, but Hey, that's fine. If we got to yeah. do it, we got to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, any any feeling on uh, on where things are going to go in San Diego over the next couple of years? What are you seeing just on the ground right now? If there's any shifts you see coming? I mean, it, it's a hard question. I think that right now it's a good opportunity to take advantage of the market. I think the market has been artificially propped up with the low interest rates. Things are going to have to change. And we can't say what or when, but I can say that you're going to want to be able to buy when things change. Um, So if you're not doing the work right now, put some money in the bank so that you can buy later. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we were hearing the same thing from guys like Chris Noggle, uh, who's been on the show. I think it's been maybe, Greg, maybe a month, a little over a month ago since he was on. And that's exactly what he said. Start stockpiling cash. Everybody I know, you know, that's what he says, that everybody he knows that's smart is stockpiling cash putting themselves in a position to buy because you don't know exactly what's coming, but you know, something's coming. It's not good. And you want to be in a position to, uh, to get rich off of it when it comes. So I love that. Um, let's, we'll talk about uh, a couple of final questions, but how do people get in touch? How do they reach out and uh, work with you? Yeah, they can uh, hit me up on Instagram or Facebook, LOL at Gene Volpe. Um, and, you know, give me a call. Um, I'll be, you know, available anytime. I'm fine. Send me an email, whatever. I'm doing a mastermind at the end of the year, at the end of September uh, in Scottsdale, limited uh, seats open. So I think it'll be really exciting about investments. And, you know, I think something that'll be really cool is to talk about how much money do you really make per hour? Hit me up. Awesome. Let's do a round of how do people connect with you. So Jean, I think she gave yours away, but how do people reach out to the Evil Ball Ninja? She totally gave mine away, but it's worth repeating. Uh, hit me up on social media, Gene Volpe. Pretty simple. <laughs> I love, you can I love how Greg, Greg is posting a picture of you that looks identical to your current video. Thank you, Greg. Extremely <laughs> Pretty helpful. close, except I got a yeah. gray shirt in that one. Um, I also would like to mention, if I might, that we're supposed to be in uh, Boca Raton, Del Rey, Fort Lauderdale on the 20th of April through the 24th. And if you're in that area and you have you are a real estate agent or a loan officer, hit me up because I'm going to be poolside talking to all my favorite people about marketing and credit repair and loans and all that good stuff. So shout out at your boy. All right. So, Greg, how do people reach out and connect with you? Oh, Matt, that's easy, man. They just reach out and say hi. I got a big heart of gold. I love talking to people. Um, guys, I'm not going to be ashamed about it. We are hiring for an EXP team. We are expanding na- internationally. Uh, so go ahead go ahead and give me a text. Uh, the number has been scrolling this entire time down below you. I can either contract someone to come out there and uh, clean your car with rocks per Matt's uh, discretion because he does love cleaning cars with rocks. Uh, or you can join my EXP team or just have a conversation with me. And by best phone number is going to be 925 915 1978. So, Matt, how, how can we get a hold of you? You, you did write a, a mighty nice pamphlet, aka a book, on some phenomenal stuff, Micro Famous. How can they get a copy of this? And all jokes aside, guys, you know I mess with Matt all the time. This is actually legitimately a very good book. Thank you. I appreciate the lot. Your check is in the mail, Greg. Uh, you can go to getmicrofamous.com and get a digital copy there. You can also get it on Amazon. And of course, remember to subscribe to the Microfamous podcast on wherever your fine podcasts are offered. Your micro podcasts? Yes, yeah, the micro podcast. Sure. <laughs> Does All that right. mean they're only eight minutes in length? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gene. Nice. Piling on. Cool. Okay, Ashley, let's finish up with this. Um, <laughs> So what, what advice would you give to agents that are young in the business uh, that are having the usual, 
I don't know. Well, I don't think you'd call it confidence issues, but kind of wondering how do you, how do you go in straight away? Uh, would you, would you do what you did the first time around, which is join a team before you go out on your own? Would, if you had to do it over again, would you just jump right into the business solo? Uh, what would you do if you had to do it over again? Oh, shoot. I would, uh, new agent, they need to hook up with a really good title rep in their, their area, start getting ideas, hit the doors, hit the phones, um, do open houses when we can pre pandemic or post COVID, whatever it is, (laughs) but, uh, start doing things that generate business. Um, look online, do some research, find a niche. Do not just go out and do, you know, every single thing, find a niche, stick to it, hook up with a title rep and leverage everything that you can. I've never heard in in all of our years of asking similar questions like that. I've never heard anybody say hook up with a good title rep right out of the gate. Why do you say that? Yeah. Dude, title has everything that you ever want to know. They can get you Mm -hmm. lists. They can get you so much data. They can get you everything. I, Hmm. I literally talk to my title rep twice a week. Like Noah's like, Ashley's calling. Why? Well, I'm trying to figure out how to get unemployment leads. I'm like, I want leads. How do I get them? Where can I go? That's where they, that's where everything's recorded. You can find everything through title, everything they have, or they have the resources or they can find out, you know, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can get so much information by leveraging something that is so simple. Right. And that's Mm -hmm. it it doesn't cost you anything. Love it. And I love that your first advice was not to jump on TikTok or Instagram. That's pretty fantastic. (laughs) That wasn't any of our advice. (laughs) (laughs) All right, gentlemen, uh, should we wrap a uh, nice bow around the present of this episode, Greg? We should, Matt. And you and Gene need to do your job. So, gentlemen, please pick two colors for the bow on the show. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to screw you up with this one, Greg. Cerulean. So oh, really? What the fuck is so oh. Don't tell me you're it's, it's some type of blue. That's all I know. Okay, so we're gonna do a cerulean, some type of blue. Gene, what's your color? Hold on for a second. I'm googling crazy color names. Wait a minute. <laughs> you can't cheat. You can't match me just by Google. Come on now. Burley wood. <laughs> Burley wood. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's, that's some, some sort of burnt brown. umber. Uh, yeah, some kind of brown is my guess on it. Uh, okay, so, so we're gonna do brown. brown. There you go. There you go. Blue and brown. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, we love you to pieces. Thank you so much for you guys watching the show. We cannot do the show without you. Uh, as you guys know, we run on an algorithm. So please go out there and give us a five star, not a two star review because that helps the algorithm show our show to more people. Uh, please comment and you know, do a hashtag for Ashley Chapman if you guys, or hashtag uh, Ashley Chaps. Uh, either way, you want to go with that with her because uh, she she is dropping knowledge bombs. She's doing a lot of good work out there in San Diego and everywhere else in, in regards to kind of the investment side on real estate. Uh, you know, hashtag Gene Volpe, hashtag Matt Johnson. Don't hashtag Greg McDaniel because that's just going to get weird when it comes to the sites you're going to go to. Because- no. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you to pieces, guys. Thank you so much. Until next time, boom, peace. We out, ninjas. Go. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I hope you take action immediately with the tactics and the takeaways that you've learned. Now, if you'd like to take the relationship to the next level with me, which I strongly encourage that you do, by the way, I want you guys to go ahead and shoot me a text. You know, it's 925-915-1978. A lot of times, if if people are feeling stuck or they just need a a third party to listen and kind of throw some ideas at, I would love to be that for you. Take the McDaniel Challenge. Well over 400 people have taken the challenge. And you know what? It's been a positive result. 99.9% of the time. Nah, I'm kidding. It's been 100% of the time. It's been a blast. And I would encourage you guys to reach out to me. I really would love to talk with you. If you're feeling a little stuck and you guys need a third party to kind of just bounce some ideas off, I'm here for you. Again, that number is 925-915-1978. And as always, peace out, ninjas. We got it.